Hello, my name is Roisin and welcome or welcome back to Roisin's Reading. So we're not filming in my brand new, very comfy chair in my office um, because today I got some really beautiful flowers from Freddie's Flowers, not sponsored obviously. Um, look at them, I just, I really like them. And I um, wanted them to be in my video. But my office is so tiny, I have no idea where I could put them that they would be able to be in the video at the same time. So we're in here today. So this video is going to be the reader habits tag. Now I saw Lena Norms had done this fairly recently as part of her vlogmas, um, which I will leave linked in the description. And I couldn't find out who had originated the tag, but if I do find them, I will put their name here and put them in the description as well, if I do a little bit more diving. Um, and when I read the questions, I was convinced I had done this tag before, uh, but I looked through all the videos on my channel and it's not there. So I don't know why I was so convinced I'd done this before. Maybe I've just seen several people do it, um, but I decided it's been actually six months since I did a tag video that wasn't like a try a chapter tag, which is kind of a bit different. Um, a tag video that was just answering some questions I haven't done for six months. Uh, I'm not tagged in this video, I've very rarely been tagged in tags, um, but I just thought it seemed like some good questions to answer that isn't just recommending books that I recommend all the time. So without further ado, let's get into those questions. The first one is, do you have a certain place at home for reading? Uh, I have several places at home that I like to read. So of course I have my new chair in my office, which I talked about in the introduction. Um, but I also have another armchair, which is in my conservatory. And um, I like to read in there when it's raining um, because the sound of the rain on the conservatory rooftop is really lovely. Um, I also like to read in there as long as it's not too hot or too freezing cold, I often read in my conservatory because I also have a day bed there. Um, so if I want to stretch out and really get cozy, then there is space for that too. I have been known to bring my duvet down from my bed and get it into the day bed in the conservatory because I can look out over the garden, um, hear the birds and the rain, like I said. Um, so it's quite a nice place to read. Uh, I also often read in my bed and I read in my spare room bed. <laughs> in fact, this room here, and the kitchen are pretty much the only places that I wouldn't physically read a book. Um, because I have I have physically read books in the bath as well. Although I don't read library books in the bath because the steam makes my makes the pages slightly wavy, and that's fine when I own the books, but it's not something I would do with a library book. And then other places I read, I mean I read because I love listening to audiobooks, I read all over the place. So I read in my lunch break at work in the staff room. I read, I read on buses and trains. I read when I'm going for a walk by listening to audiobooks. So I'm not really fussy about where I read, um, but I have lots of cozy corners in my house if that's what I'm looking for at the time. Number two, bookmark or random piece of paper. So for the most part, I actually just remember where I was, um, which people seem to think is kind of um, strange and like, it requires a really strong memory. Um, I don't know. I do have a pretty good memory for some things, um, but I find that I can just sort of work out where I was in a book by knowing sort of roughly how much it looked like I'd read and then flipping backwards and forwards until I find the place because I remember the last thing I read. Generally speaking, it's not too long between I when I pick up books. Um, so remembering is fairly straightforward. Um, if I, I do have bookmarks, but I am, terrible with things like that and will lose them, leave them everywhere, have no idea where they are. I mean, this morning I lost the little dongly thing that put, I put my SD card in to put it on my laptop um, and then I found it in my makeup bag. So I'm not really good <laughs> with, with things that are made specifically for that that are small. Anything small, I can't keep a handle on. I bought three different pairs of headphones, four pairs of headphones this year because I just, I can't hold on to small things. They just, I don't know, they vanish. Um, <laughs> So yeah, generally speaking, I just remember where I was. I also often put my page count that I'm on onto my story graph, which is linked in the description, um, because you can do that while you update where you're reading. And if I'm really not sure where I am, I can look at that. But if I put my page count in there, I'm liable to remember the number because I've written it down. So I'll remember the page number. Question number three is, can you stop reading? Can you just stop reading or do you have to stop after a certain, after a chapter, a certain amount of pages? So I generally speaking stop um, at a good point to stop. I prefer I prefer when I'm reading to like plan how much reading I've got, uh, particularly if I'm not enjoying a book. With an audiobook I will just stop wherever because obviously 
it keeps your place um so it's very very easy and often i'll stop because someone's come to talk to me or whatever or i've got home so i'll just stop it where it is i don't keep listening until the end of the chapter i find that actually quite frustrating um if i'm ever listening to an audiobook and i'm waiting for the chapter to end because i've got like four minutes left on the chapter those four minutes feel like the longest four minutes ever um so i can't really do that uh when it comes to physically reading though like i said i often be like okay i'm gonna try and get to this chapter and then keep reading until i get to that chapter or that page count um if it's in the middle of a chapter i don't mind um but if i was reading just because i wanted to um i feel like I very easily get distracted by my phone or whatever, so I kind of need um, a a, de a deadline, not a deadline, a goal to work towards to keep myself going. Um, I don't know, maybe I should try and see what would happen because it's not that I go to a chapter because I need to finish there so I don't lose my place or have or anything like that. It's that I do that so I've got a end goal in mind. Um, so maybe I should try just reading and putting it down when I feel like it. I mean, I often end up putting it down when I feel like it anyway, so who knows question number four is do you eat or drink while reading uh i drink obviously uh well i say obviously but if so, if you're reading for an hour and you don't drink any water um that sounds that just i can't comprehend that i need to be drinking uh water or squash my preference is lemon squash um if you are dr reading for an hour and not drinking at all that seems odd to me um but i do tend not to eat when I'm reading. I will occasionally snack on something very dry that won't leave residue on my fingers. Like I wouldn't eat chocolate while reading. Um, but something something easy to snack on. Um, like, I don't know. I can't think of anything that I would snack on. Like nuts maybe would be fine to snack on as long as they didn't have any like dust on them. Um, I'm just very concerned about making my books dirty. Not because I need, think that books need to be pristine, but because I am my mum calls me a chaos pixie um and i feel like if i didn't be very careful i would end up with like torn books books with shit all over them um not literally um but so i just need to be careful and particularly since i read as i said a lot of library books i work in a library most of the books i've read this year have been borrowed from my library um so i feel like i definitely can't get those messy and because i treat them that way i end up just treating all physical books that way listening to an audiobook of course is a different matter um can do anything while listening to an audiobook um but i do find i'm just not particularly good at eating one-handed so reading a book or um reading an ebook it's just not something that i think i can manage uh question number five multitasking music or tv while reading so i can occasionally read when there's something on the tv if i am sitting far enough away from it and i'm not interested in what's on tv but i do find it very very difficult um i've only managed it a couple of times and i certainly read a lot slower when i do that um i've done it when i've been staying at someone's house and like they're just watching tv but i feel rude going to the room and reading whilst they're downstairs or whatever so i've done it then but i find it difficult very difficult um music is fine if there's no lyrics i can listen to music so i listen to film scores or like matthew ha ha matthew housel or other jazz music or any kind of classical instrumental lo-fi brian eno anything like that i can manage whilst i'm reading um but anything with lyrics i think like a lot of people i find it difficult even if the lyrics are in a different language i know that some people manage lyrics in another language but even then i think i'm just too hooked on people's words and it instantly distracts me um so yeah i, I don't really manage with that i do often have not often but i do occasionally put on a um, ambience room asmr room something like that i particularly like it if i can match it to the vibe of what i'm reading so if i'm reading like 18th century france historical fiction then i pick an 18th century france ambience room um and like i said i like to read in my conservatory when it's raining because i like the sound um so yeah things like that i can manage but most of the time i read in silence i've also been actually enjoying doing um reading sprints lately with when people make those on youtube so they go live and they chat for like 10 15 minutes and then they read for half an hour and then chat for 10 minutes and read for half an hour i found that that's really good at keeping me accountable uh when i was reading when i was at when i was working when i was at uni i used to go and sit in my friend's room and just work while she was working and i found that so much easier than sitting in a room by myself and working um because by myself there's no pressure i can 
like fuck about and it doesn't make as much difference. Whereas even if I have headphones on and there's no way she could know what I was doing on my computer, I would feel guilty if I wasn't working. So I had to trick myself into working. Um, and I feel like the, the um, reading sprints kind of work in a similar way for me. I have to guilt myself into reading. It's easier if everyone else around me is doing the same thing. Um, question number six, one book at a time or several at once? Um, I recently posted on my um, Instagram stories, is nine books at once a ridiculous amount of books to be reading at the same time? Um, more than half people said no, that's not a ridiculous, like they said that was a, I think I said it was a, no was it a normal amount of books and they said yes. So I know a lot of people read a lot of books at the same time, but I'm always reading probably like actively reading about three books at a time is kind of my standard, uh, particularly if I'm filming some sort of vlog, I will be reading three of those books at the same time. So I'll start one, get to 20%, and then I'll start another one. Um, so I'll be getting to like 20% of one and 50% of another, and then I'll start a third one. And so I'll be like at a different level. So once I've started the third one, then I will end up finishing the first one. And so I can pick up a fourth one and it will like balance out like that. Like I don't, it doesn't have to be exactly that, but roughly, like I'll get a little bit of a way in one, halfway in one, finish one, and then cycle around um, to stop myself getting bored. Um, I don't think, I have read all one book in a day. I read Normal People in one day, and I read Wintering in one day. Um, leave both of those vlogs in the cards up above. So it is doable for me, but I definitely think that um, it's easier for me when I get like sick of a book, moving on to another book. Particularly obviously having an audio book and a physical book on the go at once. Um, I don't think I would ever have, well I definitely have in the past had two audio books on the go at once, but I don't prefer to do that. Except that actually I will always have the audio book that I'm reading my set by myself and then the audio book that I'm listening to at bedtime with my boyfriend. Um, because we listen to audio books to go to sleep, so, which is currently Wolf Hall. Um, I've tried to get him to listen to Wolf Hall. I think it is too complicated for him to read whilst going, to listen to whilst going to sleep uh, and having never read it before. I think it's like, he's not, he's no idea what's going on basically. So we might move on uh, to something else, but I have been enjoying rereading that. Anyway, yeah, so I usually have that one and the one that I'm reading for myself on the go. So currently um, I'm reading set eight books at the same time, but I think two of them are basically DNFs. So we'd say six. Um, that I'm actively, act, actually reading. So question number seven, reading at home or everywhere? Well, I kind of answered that in the first question about places I read. I read absolutely everywhere. Definitely don't just read at home. Um, I mean, I spend my most time reading at home, definitely. And I often, when I'm reading outside of my house, it will be an audiobook or an ebook um, rather than carrying around a physical book. I definitely do that sometimes, but um, I have a bad back, so carrying loads of physical books, even one physical book sometimes just feels too cumbersome. And I'm also always worried about like my bottle leaking and getting library books wet. I'm very paranoid about me, Chaos Pixie, and library books being a bad combination. Um, I've only ruined two <laughs> since I started working in a library two and a half years ago. Um, but yeah, that's that's too too many, isn't it? So um, I, I read fewer physical books while I'm out. I definitely would do, but I find, again, that sounds distract me and people around me distract me. So audiobooks are better for that. Um, but yeah, I, I, I couldn't read as much as I do if I only read at home. Uh, question number eight, reading out loud or silently in your head? Um, is there anyone who mostly reads out loud? I, apart from people who work with children, maybe? Um, I read silently in my head. I will read poetry out loud most of the time that I read poetry. Um, it's a habit I got into when I was doing my masters in creative writing and poetry. And um, we would read the poems out a few times. Um, it really helps, I feel, with the sort of rhythm of poetry and with finding the way that it sounds like it's supposed to be said or the way that it sounds best to me anyway. Um, so poetry, I will read aloud. So I tend not to read poetry when I'm out and about. Um, but apart from that, no, everything else I would read in my head. Although, of course, I obviously like being read, read aloud too because I love an audiobook. So someone else doing the reading out loud, fine. But me, not so much. Question number nine. Do you read ahead or even skip pages? Uh, when I was a teen kid, teenager, like middle grade into early YA kind of age, I used to read the last page of every book I read. Um, 
every single time I would read the last page, I was too impatient. I don't do that anymore. I don't read ahead. I don't skip pages. Sometimes I will read quite fast if I'm not enjoying a book, but I feel I need to finish it for some reason. Um, I will read quite fast through it and maybe miss stuff and or put an audiobook onto quite a fast speed. Like I listen to podcasts at 2.7 speed. So sometimes I will put books on that speed as well if I'm not enjoying them. Um, but mostly I don't do that with books um, because I don't know, it's just less enjoyable. Um, podcasts is like information, um, whereas uh, books is like more for enjoyment. Um, so yeah. I don't know. I'm, I'm quite. I don't. I definitely don't skip pages or miss out bits, regardless of how much I want to. Sometimes um, with like certain non-fiction books and things, I don't. I would feel very, very guilty if I did. I don't look down on other people who do, although maybe in a novel, because like, don't you need to know what's happened? You might miss something. Um, but with non-fiction, no. I don't look down on other people who do it. But I couldn't. I couldn't do it myself. My my guilt would not let me. Question number 10, breaking the spine or keeping books like new? Uh -huh. Well, a lot of my books have broken spines um, and not necessarily because of me. A lot of the books I own, I got second hand or hand-me-downs from my mum and it doesn't really bother me until they're so broken that bits, pages start to fall out. Um, but because, again, I read a lot of library books, um, I try not to break those spines. And the main reason I try not to break those spines is because if you break a book spine of a book you own, probably you're going to read it you might read it again you might lend it to one or maybe two people whereas in the library obviously we want them to go out to as many people as possible and so if you break the spine and make it so that that book has less longevity that's a big effect on the library like because they have to buy a new book um and the funding not great for libraries so Generally speaking, with library books, I try my best not to break the spine. I think that that's why I read a lot of hardbacks. I find them harder to break the spine of. Um, but yeah, I, it's, that just doesn't really bother me, but I don't intentionally break spines. I'm not one of these people who likes to hold it with the back, put round the side and hold it with one hand like that. Um, I don't know, my arthritic wrists maybe, just can't handle it. So I prefer, when I'm reading a physical book, it's usually like on my lap, so it doesn't need to be broken. And finally, number 11, do you write in your books? No. Uh, again, library books would be rude to write in a library book. Um, if anyone, I, I don't see a lot of um, notes in library books, actually, but um, except for like picture books. Um, that's not really a note, it's a scribble. Um, but yeah, no, I don't write in books because I because I read a lot of library books and listen to a lot of audio books. I feel I'm, I'm like, a weird completionist person and I would feel like why I would feel I would struggle to write in books that I own and then not do the same thing when reading books from the library or listening to audiobooks uh I had a reading notebook a reading journal there is a video about that if you want to go and set it up if you want to go and watch that how I set it up for 2020 2021 it is 2021 isn't it I, I I ended up not using it. Um, I'm not a consistent enough person for that sort of thing. I, I cannot form a habit for the life of me. I really struggle with habits and anything like that. So something that I'm supposed to like remember to do, not gonna happen, not gonna happen. I have to have alarms to remind me to brush my teeth in the evening, um, otherwise I forget. So I'm not gonna remember to use anything like that. And I would feel like I'd let books down by <laughs> not taking notes in them when I'd taken notes in other books. So yeah, I don't. I did when I was at uni. Um, my my version of The Metamorphosis by Ovid has lots of notes in it because I did my dissertation on that. Um, but generally speaking, no, that's not something that I do. So that was the reader habits tag. If you haven't done this one before, then I tag you. I'm not gonna go tagging specific people. Um, I'm not very good at that. So if you are interested in doing the reader habits tag, then go ahead. Um, I hope you enjoyed this video. Please do let me know if I've offended you with any of my habits. I would love to chat with you about them in the comments, or if you have any answers to these questions that you'd love to talk about. And thank you for watching. Please remember to give this video a thumbs up if you liked it and to subscribe. I put out new videos. Well, I'm currently putting out new videos four times a week until Christmas. Um, so I will see you again very, very soon. Thank you for watching. Bye bye. Oh, I just want that to be done. Got really sick. Oh, gosh. I'll do them in and not be like so. There we go.